of the second round here in Norman at the NCAA Gymnastics Regionals. So glad to have you along with the number one team in the country in the house, the Sooners. Already two teams have advanced. It went chalk in session number one. Cal was able to get by Utah State and Boise State. That tandem really put up a fight, though. And then business as usual, and then some for Minnesota. A 197-825 in session one. Their best score at NCAAs in program history. So we've seen already the Gophers and the Bears have advanced and a pair of Oklahoma, Arizona State, Arkansas, or Arizona will join them. All right, here's the quad box, and the way that it will work is the top left is Vault. That's Arizona State where they will start. Top right, you can see the gym backs are in dashing white and red, and they're on bars. Beam is Arizona to start things off. That's on the bottom left, and then the bottom right is the number one team in the nation, Oklahoma. They are top five in the country in every single event, including the best bars team in NCAA Division I. Sam, what are we looking forward to here? I am looking, I'm, I'm overwhelmed. Let's just start there. There's a lot of gymnastics to watch. If you are feeling overwhelmed, you are not alone. A quad bo box is difficult to follow. There's four amazing teams. I'm right now looking in the top right, Leah Smith for Arkansas. She has so much talent. She is just a freshman. You're gonna be hearing her name a lot over the last four years. And what an honor to get to start off the competition for your team at such an important competition. And that's how Arkansas begins on bars in the top right. Bottom left on beam for Arizona is Allison Fears. And then Bell Johnson is getting ready to lead off for Oklahoma bottom right on floor. We already saw a vault from Arizona State's Jordan Jaslow, the first event here in session number two. And Emily White getting set in the top left for the Sun Devils making their fourth straight NCAA Regionals appearance, 23rd overall. And they're excited about this draw. They think they have a real chance, not only if it goes the way we saw in session one, chalk, then the Sun Devils would come out along with Arizona State, but Jim Devils like their chances of even advancing to nationals this year. And they're really proud of the Yurchenko foals that they do have. You see the clean landings there, and that's really been a focus for that team. High fives from head coach Jess Santos there. And they're really working on minimizing the deductions because they don't have the difficulty, the one and a half, and the 10-0 start values that some of these other teams have, like Oklahoma. KJ Kindler for Oklahoma in their 16th season, the head coach of the Sooners, the four-time national champion, including 10 top three finishes. She just won her 11th Big 12 Coach of the Year award at Oklahoma. And she told us she, she just wants to see this team go out and perform the way that they know how. And if they do that, Sam, shouldn't be a problem tonight and, and honestly with the way that they have been all year long it shouldn't be a problem getting to Fort Worth either yeah and you know what was interesting in our conversation with Oklahoma's head coach there she is right there giving Bell Johnson a hug what was interesting about our conversation is even though we assume they're slated to compete in the regional finals they don't think that way they said they're not taking anything for granted that would be a huge mistake so they're planning lineups their best lineups for today and they're going to see what happens in the next competition if they get there it's been a tough start on vault in the top left for arizona state so far nine six seven five followed by a nine seven five and you see reeves going down there one of very few Yurchenko one and a halfs with a 10-0 start value in this lineup. Theodoro is the other one, but she was scratched in this one. Isabel Redman now into the anchor spot for Alex Theodoro. Here's Maddie Jones on the right side. For Arkansas, the goal here is sticking and handstands. You're going to hear us repeat that because all four teams, that is obviously a focus. But 
They tried too hard for their sticks at SEC, so they're working on a healthy balance of absorbing the landing, wanting to stick, but focusing on the technique first, and you're seeing it show up right there. So far, nothing below a 9-8 for Arkansas so far. Jensen Scalzo with a 9-8-5 just before that routine by Matty Jones. Sam, when you look at the rankings, Arkansas and Arizona State are separated by just two spots, number 16 and number 18. It wouldn't shock anybody to see the gym backs out of the SEC get to Saturday night. Absolutely not, and it's an interesting story they have here this year. Last year, they found themselves having a lot of success, and this year, they've had a lot of adversity to, do, to deal with. COVID at the beginning of the year, managing injuries, and they really haven't hit their stride. They haven't done one meet this season where they've put it all together, so they're hoping to do that here tonight. Big step right there on that pass for Carly Woodard, bottom right on floor for Oklahoma. Like, do She's not been see a flag. She's been an impressive athlete to watch so far this season. Her best event is balance beam, but she actually took on Flores a responsibility her fifth year, which is something you don't see often. Carly, the Big 12 event specialist of the year. And we will see her on beam. Looking forward to that, where she has a perfect 10 already this season. Top right, Sarah Schaefer. This is her sixth season in Fayetteville now. She has been one of the fan favorites for many, many years at Barnhill Arena, finishing up her bars routine. And she is just a competitor through and through. And we've obviously been a fan of Sarah because we've watched her for so long and watched her growth here. Check out this dismount. Elevates off the bar. Zones in on spotting the ground, finds the landing very easily. They're two for two on step landings over there. Schaefer has had to battle through so many injury issues. It's like a laundry list that she brings to the doctor every time, but somehow able to continue competing and getting her master's in operation management right now for the former SEC freshman of the year. And there's Isabel Redmond to finish off the vault rotation for Arizona State. They rebounded nicely from Reeves' fall. Mangahas with a 9-8, and then Hannah Scharf. We'll see her in the all-around at 9-8-2-5 to begin her night. Arkansas has been really impressive, though, on bars so far. Waiting on Schaefer's score, but 9-8, 9-8-5, and 9-9 at the moment. Nice backhand spring layout on beam. Beautiful side semi. Watch Kennedy Hambrick top right for Arkansas. The four time All American sticks her dismount. She missed a meet because of COVID and was sorely missed as well. She's kind of the heart and soul of this team and certainly, Sam, for them to reach their full potential. She's got to be out there on all four events. Yeah, and that makes three for three in terms of stuck landings over on the uneven bars. So I'm sure coaches are happy that the hard work in the gym since SECs has been paying off. The top left, that was Gayla Griswold out of Lindenwood competing as an individual. You don't have to just be on a team in order to make NCAA Nationals, but you do have to have the top score on each apparatus, or one of them, you don't have to have all of them, of course, and then all around, the top individual that is not advancing to Fort Worth with their team will go there as an individual. So, and all of those scores, Sam, are coming from this meet. So it's incredibly important because you throw all of that out once you get to Saturday. Saturday's all about the top two teams. In the bottom right is Danae Fletcher for Oklahoma. She is relatively new to the lineup, but she has a metal plate in her wrist, been through a lot of adversity when it comes to injuries, and at times wasn't even sure if she was able to come back. So this is a, a proud moment for her and, and her team.
Maggie O'Hara, the first regular season All-American program history last year is on bars. This is her event, and that is how the Razorbacks finish out rotation number one. Nothing below 9-8 at the moment. And remember, in order to get to Saturday, the regional final, it's not about winning tonight. It's about coming in the top two. It doesn't matter which of those two you are. It's not often in sports that it's you're still a winner if you get in second place. But here today, all you have to do is get top two. You don't even have to win. And I think that's sometimes a comforting thought, except when you compare your competition. And there's a lot of good ones out there here today. Down to our final two events with the vault and bars rotation finished. Of course, beam and floor take the longest to complete. So we will finish off with them on each rotation here tonight. It's a 48-8 for Arizona State on vault. Far below their NQS, they're 11th in the country in that, a 49-275. I'll talk with co-head coach Jess Santos in a moment. I'm sure she's not gonna be super pleased with that. Danielle Seavers, right side of your screen for Oklahoma on floor. Following up a 9-9 and a couple of 9-8-5s. I was fortunate enough to get to cover Oklahoma's very first meet of the season, and they have improved so much. And one thing that head coach KJ Kinler was really proud of was the fact that they're adding difficulty. That first pass full in for Danny Sievers is extremely new back in the lineup for her. And that's something that they're really happy about here in this postseason. Jessica Castles just finishing off her beam routine for Arizona. There was a scoring delay with the leadoff, Allison Fears. It ended up being a 9-7, and that's why they're a bit behind right now on beam on the left side of your screen. I love this choreography. It's really fun, it's intricate. She gets the crowd involved. Oklahoma's NQS on floor 49-585, one of the best teams in the country we mentioned on every event. And surprisingly, floor is actually their worst event, though you can't really say worst when you're fifth in the country, can you? I guess comparatively <laughs> for the standard they set for themselves. Hey, I think if you ask everyone on their team, what they expect. They want to be first on every single event and in the all-around standings, but doesn't every team want that? Getting a glimpse at Maggie Nichols there. What a stud of an athlete she was. Malia Hargrove giving a pep talk from Taylor Spears, who was an NCAA beam champion and a competitor at Oklahoma. So this is a, a nice homecoming for her as well. That yesterday, John Malia Cole Hargrove. Oh, uh, sorry, Sam. Just saying, yesterday, Malia Hargrove scored a 9.85 on this beam routine. Still Daniel Sievers' really score nice just so came far. in. 9.9, nine, nine, Sam. No problem. Got plenty of time to get all the info in there tonight. And Jordan Bowers ready on the right side for Oklahoma. Bowers and then followed by Reagan Smith. Truthfully, you don't want to miss either one. Bowers is the Big 12 Newcomer of the Year. She's really settled in. KJ Kindler said the first six weeks was a huge adjustment, but I think any freshman can really say that. And now she just exudes confidence. Hargrove finishing her Gamer Heat team here with a round off one and a half. 
nice job. Sometimes the teams that competed the day before, it's almost like they got a little warm up <laughs> for today's competition. Sure. And especially with uh, the way that Arizona went out there and took it from West Virginia as well. 196.525, which is the highest first round score in NCAA history since that new format was instituted. Should be a great score here for Bowers as she salutes the home fans at the Lloyd Noble Center. Yeah, no problems so far with Oklahoma starting on floor. Arkansas so far the leader in the clubhouse at the moment with a 49-4-5, a massive bars rotation for the gym backs. I would think head coach Jordan Weaver, you're number three for her. She's going to be extremely excited about that. And, and you yes. know, Sam, they had so much success last year. Uh, they're trying to build off of it, and it starts tonight. And I think it added a little bit of pressure to the expectations this year. And they're hoping to kind of take that out, stay in the moment. And although Beam has been inconsistent for them so far this year, they really knew they had a lot of potential. So I'm, I'm sure they're proud of how they're starting this meet so far. Reagan's ready to go on floor for Oklahoma. Emily Muller following up Hargrove's 9-9. Nine nine. They're trying to drop 9-7 of Allison Fierce. Saw a fall over there on the left side of the screen from Emily Mueller. And 9-7 is going to have to stay with just the anchor, Serena Linton, still to come. At the moment, Oklahoma can drop a 9-8-5 by either Woodard or Fletcher. Smith is a second-team All-American on floor, ranked 12th in the nation on the right side of your screen. And Jordan Bowers' score just came in, Sam, a 9-9-5. Well-deserved. Interesting, we were talking about lineups on floor. Danny Seavers actually went last in their conference championships, but had to rush to vault. So they actually wanted to make Reagan last on floor because she doesn't do vault, giving the vault gymnast a little bit more time to breathe. Just an area where coaching really can come into play. Hey, you want to squeeze out ones. every ounce of energy you can <laughs> in the postseason. It is exhausting competing every weekend, so the coaches are trying to help them out. Big step back there by Reagan Smith to finish off her floor routine. And so rotation one now in the books for Oklahoma, as this doesn't happen very often, but Beam is going to be the last event we're going to see in the rotation. And this is Serena Linton, but still Angelica Labatt to go. She is an all-arounder from Illinois State competing as an individual, so he'll get, she'll get her chance as well. Wow, they're really icing her out here on this beam rotation. They're kind of icing out all of <laughs> Arizona that we've seen so far. Good thing they got a practice go. yesterday. <laughs> Beautiful wolf turn to get things going here in this beamer team. Yesterday she scored a 9 e 5 Looking to better that here today. Very solid triple series. Little does she know it right now, Sam. She's the only show in town. <laughs> she might know. You have this feeling when you're on balance beam where you can tell what the vibe is in the arena. Hopefully you're not focusing on it too much, but there is this sense of, oh man, everyone's watching me. You can, you can feel the eyes? 
you can peer it down at you. And for some people, maybe Serena is one of these people because that was an excellent beaver team. They do better. Oh, what a moment. A pretty solid rotation here for Arizona as well. They had to fight through West Virginia just to even earn a spot here in this second session in Norman. And you see, just to get here, it, it was a fight, finishing seventh in the Pac-12 championships. 32nd is their ranking in the NCAA. But Sam, once you get here, that's all you need to do. And then you just kind of let the cards fall where they may and, and see what you've got on any given night. And a lot of these teams the past couple of years have been chaotic to say the least. So some of these teams really haven't reached their full potential depending on what you don't see behind the curtain. A lot of these teams have been battling injuries, COVID, ongoing COVID related issues and stamina for floor routines. It's a lot to deal with that we don't often talk about. So I think the, the better thing to do is really giving these teams grace and hoping that they show up when they can and put the best meat forward on the last day of competition here tonight. Angelica Labatt will begin her evening. Again, she is in the all-around for Illinois State. She's one of three Illinois State gymnasts that are competing tonight. You have to wait till the fourth rotation, but her teammates have a Alana Laster and, and Jay Mack are here with her, so she's not completely alone competing. But, but Sam, when you got individuals in NCAA regionals, a lot of times uh, the team that you're rotating with will kind of uh, adopt you as a de facto teammate. Yeah, it's really special. First of all, I'm biased, but I think gymnastics is the hardest sport in the entire world. And all of these gymnasts know what it's like to live a gymnastics life. The grind, the hours and hours of practice. And so when an individual athlete joins their rotation, I really love that the team adopts them exactly what you're saying, Alex, because they just want to feel that support because gymnastics can be really hard, especially in a high pressure situation like regionals. You can see J2 and J3 behind Angelica right there. There are four judges in the postseason, up from two. So it kind of gives you a little bit more consistency. That's certainly what coaches are hoping for. Drop the high and low score, average the remaining two is how you get your score in the postseason. And when our co during our coaches' calls, that was a common theme, is that these coaches were excited about the four panel judges because everyone just wants a fairly judged competition and increasing the amount of judges definitely helps that. So far, two rotations, or rather one rotation, two teams standing out for, all right, rotation number two now for Arizona State. They are on the bars, you see them in the top right, top left is Vault, there is Oklahoma. The bottom left beam, Arkansas, bottom right floor, Arizona. Allie Stern to lead off. She's got a 10 already this year. That was really close to a stuck landing to start things off. It's almost like she got her foot stuck in the mat and just moved ever so slightly. It's going to be a very minimal deduction for that step. Top right on bars, Jada Manga Haas. Arizona starting with Libby Orman on the bottom right on floor and then on beam right now for Arkansas's Calista Gagnon. Is this enough gymnastics for you, Sam? When things start, I'm like, where do I look? And I'm sure everybody watching is feeling the same way because you wish you could have a few more sets of eyeballs just to soak it all in. It's amazing gymnastics here today. Top left, though, is where I'm looking next. This is Kat Lavasser. And at the home opener, Ali Stern and Kat Lavasser went back to back tens. Doing air check for eight and a half. Country on vault. Stern score came in at a 9-9. Bottom right for Arizona on floor. Libby Orman finishing off her floor routine. 
And the Gym Cats are underway. Sienna Sandley is in the top right for Arizona State. Beautiful local overshoot combination. I mean, even bars, I'm looking in the top right right now. Nice double layout dismount. A focus for them on bars is technique. They think that if you focus on the technique in the dismount, which is true, the landings will come a lot easier. And I caught that Yurchenko one and a half out of my eye in the top left, Alex. Jordan Bowers is on fire tonight. Following up Kat Lavasser's 9-8. Show one more time. Check it out. Oh. Heating up. Oh, oh. Perfect body position. Bends her knees at the right time. Chest is totally vertical. What more do you want from her? Yeah, she was about to go through the ceiling here at Lloyd Noble Center. <laughs> Libby Orman started on floor bottom right for Arizona with a 9.85, and Emily Muller will follow her. Waiting on Calista Gamio's score. Now it comes in a 9.775 on beam for Arkansas. And here is Leah Smith. Beam has really been a focus in the gym since SHC Championships. This is the event that they did have some obstacles on, but. Head coach Jordan Weber said in their inner squads, they've been looking really good. They've been simulating the corrals just like they have here at the regional championships. And she felt like they gained confidence from all of the team assignments they've been doing since then. Top left is Danielle Seavers on vault for Oklahoma. Slight step there on the landing. Again, Arizona State trying to bounce back from a tough first event. On vault, just a 48-8, but on bars, nothing below 9-8 at the moment. Check out this dismount, double layout. She spots the landing. She did a scoot with her feet, but it's definitely gonna be a smaller deduction than if she were to take a, take a hop. Yeah, nice finish there for Gracie Reeves, trying to continue this strong bars rotation for Arizona State. And you're not gonna wanna miss this vault in the top left. This is Olivia Troutman. She is back in the lineups. Could you say she's been their secret weapon? I'm not sure how much of a secret she is, Sam. I <laughs> Everyone mean, knows Olivia. She but is she fantastic. hasn't competed much this year because of an injury. Yes. So they yeah. knew getting her back in the postseason would be, I guess, not a secret weapon, but just a weapon. <laughs> <laughs> They've got a lot of those, don't they? Look at the amplitude. Huge vault. She actually got a 10 from two judges at Big 12s and won the Big 12 vault title. Oklahoma coming off their ninth Big 12 championship in the last decade, 198-2, which was almost a full point ahead of Denver and the highest in history. They have 18 conference titles. And today Fletcher is the anchor top left vault for Oklahoma, finishing out the rotation. And there you take the one and a half to a stuck landing. I was at the very first meet where she competed that, and she stuck it there as well. Coaches say that was actually the first time that she stuck it in competition, and now she does it almost every day in practice. Check it out. Good entry to the table. Nice block. Huge amplitude, her arms open. Man, she just finds the landing so easily there. And so Kat Lavasser has the low score at the moment, a 9-8. Most likely Oklahoma's going to drop that and get rid of it. And another huge vault rotation. Here, the fourth best in the country coming for the Sooners, who are already leading by a good margin going into this one. They have 49-5-2-5 in their first rotation on the floor. 
Arkansas not far behind though with a 49-4-5, but Beam has not been going the way they had hoped for. 9-7-7-5-9-6-7-5. And Chiara Gianfania finishing off that rotation. Just like in the SEC Championship, Sam, where everything was 49 or better. They were kind of rolling, and then on beam of 48-8-2-5. That's why they were focusing on it so much in this week off here. Really honing in and resetting is what they call it. Taking a big deep breath, like what we're seeing in the bottom left. Sometimes with beam, actually most of the time, all of the time, it is <laughs> the most mental event. So if you start getting in a rut, it gets, goes to your head. You have to do a total reset to regain your confidence. Very strong bars on the top for Arizona State. And really what I'm noticing, Alex, is the difference between some of these top tier teams like Oklahoma, like Michigan. They hone in so well on those landing positions. And when you can't stick the landing, those tents just add up when you talk about the amount of routines in a total team score. The bottom left, you just saw a Bailey love it and the young woman walking away is quite accomplished herself. Kyla Ross coming over to the program this season. Of course, I'm sure you know her well, the five-time national champion at UCLA. Won the Honda Award in 2020, former Olympian. How about that as a wealth of information to give Bailey Lovett? And Kyla Ross, when it comes to her as an athlete and her as a coach, she has just a very calm, confident presence. So she's been working with them very well on balance beam because she's never too high, she's never too low, very even keeled, which is a great demeanor for a coach on beam. Danae Fletcher for our Oklahoma's score came in on vault to 995, which means the rotation score for 4955. And Oklahoma is well on their way to a potential 198 score. Of course, they just need to be top two. And they're moving on to the regional final. And I gotta be honest, I thought a few of their scores were low. I mean, it's hard to see. We only get one angle that we're looking at here. But man, they have the potential to score even higher than that, I think. I agree, they did drop Lavasser's 9-8, but had to count the 9-8-5 for Seavers. And so Sarah Clark finishes off the Arizona State comeback. Certainly you would call it that in this rotation, nothing below a 9-8. And I would imagine they're gonna be able to drop that and count a couple of 9-8-2-5s, a couple of 9-8-5s, and then whatever Clark is given right there. So in the bottom right, this is Allison Fears on floor. One of two all-arounders, her and Malia Hargrove. She's a really clean gymnast yesterday. She scored in 9.875 on this floor team. Sam, quietly, Arizona is having a terrific floor rotation. Orman a 985, Muller the same, and Elena Dietz just scored a 9925. Top of your screen, Lauren Bridgens, an individual from Penn State, ready to compete on bars. And a few more choice words to try to get Kennedy Hambrick in the right mindset. Bottom left on beam for Arkansas. Because they are going to have to count Ganyao's 9775. But they have to make sure, Sam, right, that Leah Smith's 9675 is the one that's dropped. I mean, it's. It's crucial to their chances they, of advancing. They started off strong, like you mentioned, Alex, and, and this is an event that they do not want to let up on. If Kennedy can hit this beamer team, she has the potential to put up a high score for them. So the pressure is really on right now. She's a veteran on this team, so you want to believe she can hit this. If anybody can do it, it is certainly Kennedy Hambrick. Jordan Weber told us there's been so much more consistency in her training now, and with her results this season and last, she's kind of even maybe surprised herself of 
what she's capable of. The funny thing about balance beam is no matter how many routines you do, how many hours you do it, if you let one negative thought come in your mind during this beam routine, you're already off the beat. You've already lost the routine, right? So you have just got to stay in this positive mindset to have strong mental cues in order to make it through this minute and a half routine. And she clears it. She does a good job there. Right side, Caroline Harry for Arizona. As they briefly call the Hogs in Norman. There's a good contingency of Razorback fans. Not too far to get from Fayetteville to Norman, so not much of a surprise. Two usual opponents towards the top of the rankings year to year. And a few score came in. You can see it on the right side of your screen. And at 9-9, Arizona is putting the pressure on right now. And they certainly stayed in the game as well on Bean Sam with the 49-125 in their first rotation. Yeah, this is a really good rotation for them. Caroline is such a superstar. This routine is beautiful so far. Legs glued on that combination pass. <laughs> I'm laughing at a yeah, the is loose. <laughs> She's doing some TikTok dances before she gets up on balancing. You know, whatever works. Kyla told me at SECs that her style is that she wants to just dance before she gets on the beam. I said, do you dance with her? She goes, yeah, I'll do a little shoulder shrug dance, but it's mostly her. I want to see a little TikTok dance out of Kyla. I recognize it. That's a TikTok dance for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Jordan told us that Amanda just does not get enough attention ever. She is so steady. We'll see her on bars as well as beam. She's actually nominated her for SEC Specialist of the Week every <laughs> single week. Has not been named yet. This is her senior year out of Austin. Big moment for Amanda, beautiful series. I love the way she floats down to that beam. So following up Leah Smith's 9675, Arkansas has steadily increased 98, 985, and 9875, depending on what Ellswick can do here. This might end up being a pretty respectable beam rotation and quite a fight back for the gym backs. You can see some nerves showing up in this beam routine, but she's doing a good job handling it, breathing through it. It's a good way to combat the nerves up there. Just the dismount, back in spring, one and a half, nicely done. And that should definitely outscore the 9-6 we saw earlier in the lineup. On floor, Malia Hargrove, who had a 9-9 at the beginning of her all-around night, trying to follow up a couple of 9-9s from Fears and Harry. And the difficulty, she opens up with an E-pass, a full in. You'll love to see it. I think for Arkansas on bars, too, with them having that huge first rotation score, Sam, it kind of gives you a bit of cushion, right? You know, hey, if we don't have our best beam, we're still going to be right in this competition when it's all said and done. Yeah, and you don't want to take a, a big, deep breath in terms of letting loose, but I think it gives you a little bit of confidence going into that next event. Kaylee Moore is on the left. She is on the beam. Individual from Penn. Hargrove is closing out this Arizona floor rotation in style. And that's going to be a big number. The scores have been building for Arizona on foot. Check them out. They are pumped up. And they should be. What a phenomenal job having to compete yesterday. If you're going to see any signs of tiredness it would show up on floor and if anything we saw them energized and that's a really big testament to the training they've been doing in their endurance
And this, this floor rotation could not only be important for Arizona heading forward, trying to advance to a regional final and getting in the top two tonight, but also potentially if Hargrove puts up a really big number there, Elena Dietz as well, her teammate with a 9925. If Arizona doesn't advance to Fort Worth, that could be good enough to get them there as an individual. So there are a lot of different pieces at play. It is extremely tough to make it as an individual. And you know, we're talking about it, but 100% these teams are not thinking about that right now. They want to make it with their team. And even though Arizona had to battle yesterday to make it into this competition, they showed up to play again today. They want to be one of those top two teams to compete again tomorrow. Angelica Labatt readies for Illinois State on the floor, the all-arounder. But Malia Hargrove's score is in, and it is a 9-9. Okay, welcome back to Norman. Want to apologize, the, the truck lost power. So we are back and got everything up and running, and really, luck timing because we did not miss much. Alex Perlman, Sam Peshek back with you here for rotation at number three. Just a few gymnasts have gone. Top left is Vault for Arizona. They are coming off of a very strong second rotation, 49-5, which is their third highest in program history. And right now, a 9-8-2-5 for Caroline Harry, and Emily Muller just put in a 9-8 on Vault for Arizona. Bars for Oklahoma on the top right. You can see bottom left is Arizona State on beam and bottom right Arkansas looking to make up that tenth of a point that they trail by here in the third rotation on floor. It says Carrie Thomas in the top right on bars. She has gotten a 10 from one judge at Big 12, so she's capable of a big number for Oklahoma. Another solid vault there for Arizona, Danielle Nosek. Following up Allison Fears, 9775. She's competing in the all around. You only have to be in the top two to make the regional final. Doesn't matter if you're number one or number two, as long as you're in that spot. You are moving on, and your hope of making nationals in Fort Worth continues. Yeah, but Alex, the problem with that is earning that second place spot is really tough. Arkansas and Arizona are very close together in these rankings so far, and it's not out of the question to still consider Arizona State for that second place spot as well. I think what's so amazing right now, Sam, is that Arizona by leaps and bounds is outperforming what they've done all season. I, I mean, to go into this rotation and really have a chance to still compete is really very, very incredible. I mean, you're talking 98.625 is what they had coming into this one after that 49.5. I'm telling you, they just needed a warm up day. It's all they needed. Oklahoma readying on bars with Reagan Smith and 9-9 for Seavers. Lavasser followed up with a 9-8-7-5. We're waiting on the score to come in for Carrie Thomas. And it just did, so it's a 9-8-5. And for Arkansas, a very important floor exercise coming on the bottom right of your screen. It is technically their lowest scored event this year. They're just 24th in the country. But and easy with the a 985 and Maddie Jones with a 99 Sam, so a really good beginning there. Stuck dismount from Reagan Smith on the uneven bars. At Big 12s, they stuck their first four dismounts. So head coach KJ Kindler said they're getting better there, and it's an area that they're hoping to stay consistent with. Schaefer bottom right, seemed like she just stayed in. A six year out of Texas. I think for the gym backs though, Sam, they have never really had their full team out there. 
they've never gotten in a groove. COVID really affected their lineups throughout the entire season. Kennedy Hambrick and, and Leah Smith both ended up missing meets. And they're just looking for that one meet where it all comes together. And, and maybe it's tonight. I mean, certainly not the beam they were looking for, but they've rebounded nicely. Well, this floor team in particular is really special for her and head coach Jordan Weaver. She finishes this last pass. You're going to see it right here with a double back. In the first four years, she was really struggling to get it around. And now she's over rotating unfortunately she under rotated just a bit there but in practices she's been over rotating that with no problem so working on that endurance is a huge focus for her that she's something she's really proud of top right for oklahoma on bars jordan bowers following up the 9925 from smith a bit of a false start there on the left side top left emily white or sorry, Angelica Labatt, that is on vault. Illinois State's all-arounder, so she'll recollect herself and, and get another go as the dismount down for Bowers. Another stunt landing for Oklahoma. And Alex, you're talking about the false start on vault. As long as you don't touch the board, you can walk back and try it again. So not sure what the matter was. What, what was happening over there on the vault rotation, but it's looking like she's recollecting herself in this moment when something like that happens, it's actually way harder to go for your vault the second time around. Looks like she had no problem and a very nice, powerful one and a half there, just the step on the landing. Yeah, all things considered. Arizona suffering though at 9775 for the final four to go on vault for the Gym Cats, which means they're going to drop one of them, but their high score is a 9825, and then a 98 by Emily Muller, so their score comes in at a 4895 with the drop score for the rotation. So that's going to hurt them a little bit, and we'll see if Arkansas on floor can catch up. Bottom right of your screen. Top is Audrey Davis, the terrific anchor on bars for the Sooners. Yeah, you're gonna want to watch this bar routine. It is absolutely incredible. Every little detail, huge. Jaeger, back up to that handstand position, legs glued. Oh, Sam, did you see the bottom right? Did you see Leah Smith? I didn't want to Smith, Leah Smith hurt herself, and now she had to walk off. She just saluted, and she's getting some attention from Jordan Weber. You know, I watched her do that full in, and she landed a little wonky. So that certainly overshadows oh, no. Audrey Davis, who's the number two gymnast in the country, but you just hope it's not, not something that, uh, you know, you never want to see for, for Leah Smith or any gymnast. Let's take one more look here at Smith. She goes for that front into just a, a back tuck there. And you can see that's where she really realized she shouldn't go for the scale. And I got to give her a lot of credit for knowing yeah. when to stop, because if she were to go for that and really was injured or had a cramp or whatever is going on, she could have seriously injured herself. So knowing when to bow out, that's sometimes the hardest thing to do. So uh, hoping she's okay and her teammates look confused and she looks upset and confused as well. And it's not something they're hoping to do here in this floor rotation. Well, at least, at least she's walking it off and, and she'll get some treatment there on the trainer's table. Luckily for Arkansas, they do have nothing below a 9-8 at the moment just from Schaefer, but a 9.85 and a 9.9, the other scores, and uh, with Kennedy Hambrick and, and Bailey Lovett still to go, two very reliable gymnasts. Yeah, unfortunately, Leah Smith is in their vault lineup as well, and something like this, you know, you train with 
your teammates every single day. Kennedy Hamburg is up next, and yes, she's a veteran, but it really rattles you. First of all, you have less time to prepare. You have this whole mental routine of what you do and how much time you have before you go to salute. So now that she's done, Kennedy had to speed up that process, get ready a little bit quicker. And then on another note, you're worried about your teammate. You hope yeah. that she's okay. And you're hoping it doesn't happen to you too. <laughs> Yeah, certainly multifaceted there. I can't imagine what's going through Kennedy Hambrick's mind at the moment. Hannah Scharf is going to close out as the anchor for the Sun Devils on beam on the left side. Oklahoma just putting the pressure on. Jordan Bowers leading the way on bars. That rotation with a 9975. 49-6-2-5 is their rotation score here in the third, and they need just a 49-3 coming up on beam in the fourth to score a 198. And Sam, they would actually be the first team in this year's NCAA regionals to put up that number. I mean, look at those scores. Incredible. Checking Still out discussing the, the score, yeah. Checking out the left side of the screen, this is Hannah Scharf. She's one of the leaders and one of the four gymnasts on their leadership council. She's an athlete that is very calm and collected. That's why she anchors a lot of their lineups. Nice back handspring layout. She's shown a, a lot of consistency and she's not the athlete that's gonna hype up the team, but she's the leader in the sense that she's going to work hard and her teammates notice that and it elevates their work ethic as well. And there are the four judges conversing, trying to figure out exactly what the right score is in the postseason. It goes up from two judges to four. And you take the the middle two scores and average them, drop the top and bottom. And, and all eyes and, and thoughts have to be with Leah Smith at this moment. Might get a chance to talk to head coach Jordan Weber in a little bit, try to find out exactly what's going on with Leah, but that is certainly a gymnast that, that Arkansas can ill afford to lose if they want to not only advance out of this session to the regional final, but if they have aspirations on nationals as well. Yeah, and we spoke to head coach KJ Kindler and she brought up this interesting topic of adversity. And I absolutely agree with her that sometimes when you do have adversity, waiting for a judge, one of your teammates gets injured, your team almost rallies around it and it makes them a little bit more dialed in. And that's what you wanna hope for this Arkansas team is that when Kennedy Hamburg finally gets to salute and do this routine that she's able to show up and, and dig deep and be able to do it not just for her team, but also for Leah here. Ella Chamati on the left side on beam will go for Eastern Michigan competing as an individual. There's also one individual on floor still to go, Kendra Combs of West Virginia, who, of course, Arizona was able to get by yesterday to advance to the second round. Well, we got a few routines here left to go on floor, so I'm, I, Jordan is, Jordan's ready. She's antsy. She's doing the power pose. She's ready for the judges to salute Kennedy here. Sam, what, what is it like for Kennedy right now? I mean, what can you possibly do to, to keep yourself in the game? I mean, they're doing the right things, right? Jordan's talking to her. She's kind of trying to distract her, getting her in the zone, not saying too much, but just kind of walking around. So Kennedy's doing the right thing. She's taking a little steps, kind of shaking out her arms there. You, the worst thing you could do is be a robot. You do not want to be stiff. You don't want to just stand there. You got to just kind of move around and keep yourself distracted. But listen, they're in the hot seat. Arizona is doing really well in this competition, so Arkansas does not want to let up here on floor. They've got to put two solid numbers in these anchor spots. That was a really nice beam routine on the left side for Ella Chamati. 
certainly representative. And anytime you go as an individual and you get one shot at it, all you ask to do is your absolute best and what you're capable of. And Arizona State is rewarding her as well with a bunch of high fives. Excellent sportsmanship. And, and, and it, it's great because she's just kind of laughing it off. At a certain point, you just got to laugh at the irony of like, oh, of course this would happen at one of the most crucial moments of the competition. I just wonder exactly what the judges could be looking at and talking about that would take this long. Well, she was missing a tumbling pass, and since she did only half of her second tumbling pass, she's certainly missing requirements in there. I'm confused why it's taking this long to figure out the requirements she's missing. So this is why, again, we have this delay for Kennedy Hambrick. This pass for Leah Smith. She certainly knew something was wrong. And now Kennedy is ready to go. We're, of course, impartial, Sam, but I'll say it. I'm really rooting for Kennedy right here. I think any gymnastics fan, sports fan, would be rooting for Kennedy right now because, you know, any sort of adversity out of your control, you just want them to go up and do their best. And Leah Smith's score did come in. It's a 5.2. That should easily be dropped. Kenny Hamrick can do way more than that, though. And you got to check out her teammates on the sidelines because they're trying to give her as much energy as possible here. I feel like Oklahoma finished their bars routine at least 20 minutes ago. <laughs> and like by the way, here. yeah, it was a 49.625, and they'll head to Beam to close things out, looking for this year's regionals first 198. Although Florida's representing well in Auburn as well. Finishes double pike, hangs on to that landing. And man, she is happy that routine is over. And you can just tell the wind is taken out of Leah's sails. This is her first regional championships. It's not ideal for her. And an athlete that you're going to hear a lot of over the next three years. I mean, she had such high aspirations. 2021 Nastia Lukin Cup champion. She's waiting to still reach that automatic 98599 level that, that Jordan Weber knows she's capable of. She's going to get there. I don't think there's a question about that. Listen, and Arkansas freshman will now year is finish. Tough. Yeah. There's a lot going on, and then you add in competing every single weekend, which, you know, gymnasts have done gymnastics since they've been six, but you don't compete every single weekend until you get to college. So it's a completely different level of stamina you need at this collegiate level. Well, about to go is decidedly not a freshman. Bailey Lovett, the senior out of Greensboro, North Carolina, who is really one of the heart and souls of this team. She has done so many great things for the community as well. Big part of the give back, helping out the local community in Northwest Arkansas. And a chance to really show out here in the anchor spot on floor. Hambrick's score was a 9-9. So Arkansas has gone no lower than a 9-8 except for Smith. Does that take a little pressure off you, Sam, seeing Kennedy Hambrick do that under those conditions? I don't know. I think she still knows that the team needs a big score here. She needs 
to hit this routine, and she's capable of it. Nice. Double layout to get things going. That's knee pass. You start seeing her smile there. It was a little intense before then. She's really trying to focus, getting her routine, solid landings. Jim Max just had a 49.075 on the beam. This is going to be a huge floor score when it's all said and done, depending on what love it does. Right up there with the 49.5 or so. Maybe 49.4, we'll see. That's gonna be a good score though. And it should give Arkansas the lead heading into the fourth rotation, at least for the second spot. Oklahoma has been Oklahoma tonight for the Sooners. You know, continuing the theme of talking about Arkansas right now, I just want to bring up the fact that this is a team sport right here. Emma Kelly is first up in this top left box, going for her Yurchenko full, and all of these first five gymnasts really need to hit their vaults in order to help out the scenario with Leah Smith in that sixth spot. So it's going to take a team effort here to make it to the finals at the regional championships. So that's Arkansas on the top left on vault. Their main competitor for the second and final spot in the NCAA regional final is on the right in the top. That's out, uh, Arizona, that is. Beam bottom left is Oklahoma, and bottom right on floor, Arizona State. Bottom left, this is Jenna Dunn, and head coach KJ Kindler actually said that this routine is the most important routine of the night. And she said the same thing was the lead off on floor at regionals. And she's able to hit that and really set the Oklahoma team off on the right foot here. So as these scores come in, remember, Arizona has to make up three and a half tenths on Arkansas to advance. Savannah Penizzi on vault. Stuck your Chanko full, and that's what they are hoping to see from their athletes here tonight. Great job from Savannah. Emma Kelly led off for the gym backs with a 9.75. And we are awaiting the score from Emily Muller on bars for Arizona. Jordan Jaslow finishing up the night for Arizona State. Lead off on floor for the Sun Devils. Still a very solid year no matter what happens for Arizona State. Regular season Pac-12 co-champions for the first time ever. That was a large group though, sharing it with Cal, Oregon State, and also Utah. This is the area though that has really held them back according to Jay and Jess Santos, the head coaches. Ranked just 37th on floor. And just that th third score below 49. But maybe McKenzie this is King the media changes. Even bars. Finishing a routine with a stuck front double. All smiles all around, high fives. They are also looking for some big numbers. They don't want Arkansas to pass them. They are still in the conversation here. And Arizona began with Muller's 985. There's Sarah Schaefer. Top left for Arkansas on vault. Nice back handspring layout from Olivia Troutman in the bottom left. This is an interesting story because she's back in this beam lineup, but she's actually used to going in that leadoff spot, but she has to settle for the second position here because the team got so comfortable with Jenna Dunn leading them off, they didn't want to throw off the feng shui with the lineup scenario.
finishing round off one and a half. She's money. Every time she goes to salute, she is such an athlete, such a gamer, especially in these clutch situations. The salute from Amanda Ellswick, top left for Arkansas on vault. A 9.75 and a pair of 9.8s at the moment for the gym backs. Yurchenko layout full, good body positions in the air, clean landing. Another solid number for Arkansas on vault. Double layout dismount, really nicely done on the bars, just the step on the dismount there from Bailey McCabe. Kennedy Hambrick finishing off her all around night. And it's still very much up for grabs here. Troutman score came in at a 9-9. So Dunn and Troutman both 9-9s on beam for Oklahoma. Kennedy Hambrick, Yurchenko one and a half. And they, that might have been the cleanest landing I've seen her do all season long. Landing with her chest vertical, good body positions. Let's take another look here. She had a nice entry on the vault. Slight bent with that right arm, but is able to make it work. Good air awareness. Was that a stick? Maybe that was a stuck landing. Wow. Following Regardless, up the 9825 from Amanda Ellswick. It was it was a nice one. The scores are very similar right now though for Arizona yeah. and Arkansas. And the Jim Cats need to make up three and a half tenths. So they will need huge bars routines here from Dietz, Fierce, and Hargrove to finish off. Yeah, and look who's not next impossible. on vault. It's not Leah Smith. So they've made that decision. And they're hoping it pans out well for them. But I'm seeing some good sets on bars. It's going to be a close one. Kennedy Hambrick finished with a 9-9. And this is a lot of laster. On vault, top left. Laster is the individual from Illinois State, so Jordan Weber thinks that's good enough. She's going to save Leah Smith, and it ends being a 9-9. How about five hits, you would say? They are going to have to count Emma Kelly's 9-7-5, and maybe that's an area that Arizona can take advantage of. But again, they need big scores from the final three. Meanwhile, Oklahoma is just in their own bubble, playing their own game, wanting to outscore themselves at this point because we're, uh, despite a huge disaster, they are going to the regional finals. You penciled them in before the conversation, especially with them hosting now in Norman. Although KJ Kindler told us she's excited, but it was definitely a race to the finish line and gave kudos to event management and marketing at Oklahoma. They only had about a month before they found out they had, they had won the bid. It was originally supposed to be in Champaign, but there was a conflict there and Illinois couldn't host anymore. Allison Fierce finishing up her bar routine. Nicely done. So the rotation total is a 49.075 on vault for Arkansas. So there's their total for the meet, 196.975. That is what Arizona has to beat. If they don't, it's the end of their season. If they do, they're moving on to Saturday night. Oklahoma's 
basically already clinched a spot in the regional final here at home. Three straight nine nines to open up for the Sooners. But you gotta look to the bottom left because this is Audrey Davis and you gotta enjoy this fever team. It is so beautiful. KJ Kindler describes her as happiness in a bottle. Mm -hmm. She's always content, but also at the same time, always trying to get better. Great athlete to coach and you're really showing her progress and improvement show up in the competition. She's absolutely stunning. Textbook and everything she does. And there's also just with Oklahoma, there's so much depth on this roster. And a lot of people thought that maybe this was a team that would take a little bit of a dip this year. I think it's safe to say with the highest NQS coming into the NCAA Regionals in history, that has not happened by any means. Yeah, KJ Kindler said people counted them out, and she said it's fair. We had a lot of underclassmen, a lot of freshmen that were going to be in our roster. We didn't even know how they were going to compete, but she said that they've proven to us that they have become a team that could contend for a national championship title. All right, Malia Hargrove to finish things off on bars, but mathematically, Arizona cannot catch the gym backs, and Arkansas is going to pull the upset Wow. And an unseeded team is going to advance to the regional final here despite a wonderful final routine there from Hargrove for Arizona. It was a great meet for the Wildcats. Nobody thought, Sam, that they were going to be in that position heading into the fourth rotation. They were. They gave themselves a chance. But in the end, it's going to be the SEC and Big 12 moving on on Saturday. Angelica Labatt will finish her all-around competition at the top of your screen for Illinois State as an individual. And Carly Woodard now, the penultimate competitor on beam for Oklahoma, bottom left. They're nothing if not consistent. Four straight nine nines to begin the beam routine. And this They're is gonna go 198. Carly I just Woodard, wonder. who has the potential to score big. I was at the meet where she scored her very first perfect 10, and it was stunning. She works the beam so well. She's confident and aggressive, and she's really sharp whenever she lands, and it really stands out. Malia Hargrove's score for Arizona just came in a 9-9. Again, it's, it's not gonna matter in the final result but quite a nice way to put a bow on their NCAA oh. performance oh. Ooh, for Woodard. Carly Woodard actually was really crooked on that series. I'm more impressed with the fact that she did not come off that beam. Wow, way to adjust quickly and, and save it. Also waiting on the end of the all-around competition. Still Emma White, Emily White and uh, Hannah Scharf for Arizona State to go on floor. They have had a great floor routine though quietly with a couple of 9-9s and a 9-8-5. Remember, they're only ranked 37th in the country. Yeah, Arizona State has found a lot of success so far this season, but it takes a different level of competing well when you have the expectation to compete well. They came in seated, so they had that expect expectation of we need to do this instead of coming from an underdog state of mind. And I think that's a completely different mindset when you go to salute at competitions and it takes time to really work through that and relieve yourself of that pressure and show up and do your job just like you've been doing all season long and that sometimes there's an adjustment period for that yeah you, you have to give a ton of credit though to jay and jess santos they took over a program in complete turmoil previous coach renee list was placed on administrative leave and then fired and jay and jess got a team that was 51st in the country that had just one senior and no juniors they finished oh, last in the Pac-12 the first two years, and I mean, Sam, they, they have a very bright future in Tempe. 
They're an incredible duo, and I've been able to watch them in the Pac-12 grow this team, and their passion, you know, for the sport of gymnastics and for this team is incredible. You see Jess working the floor teams in the back. She is grinding with them. It's a, truly a team effort there at Arizona State. This is Jada Mangahas. And then just had a sharp to finish out the all-around competition. Reagan Smith will try to drop Carly Woodard's 9.75 with a representative routine. This is a treat, though. She is the best in the country on beam. This is such a treat to be able to watch Reagan Smith do beam. And you, you, I like it because you can tell just how much she loves gymnastics and loves competing. Head coach KJ Kindler said that she's so funny. Sometimes in the gym, she'll just go up to her and out of the blue, just say, I love gymnastics so much. I just love it. <laughs> and I think that's really cool because it's a sport that sometimes is, is unforgiving. Um, and for an athlete to do it as long as Reagan at a level as high as Reagan, to still enjoy it, it's really special. Such a decorated elite career and has been an incredible college gymnast as well. She has two perfect tens on beam already this season. Not gonna come tonight, but Sam, we might be on 10 watch on Saturday night. Yeah, maybe. I feel like all of these teams needed a little bit of a warm up as well. So hoping everyone has to bring their A game on Saturday no matter what. So it'll be a treat to watch that competition unfold. Nice way to close out the night for Oklahoma. And in the right screen, this is Kristen White, the assistant coach at ASU, and she was actually an Oklahoma gymnast herself. So it's another homecoming for her as well. Four straight nine nines for Arizona State on floor to go along with Jordan Jaslow's 9.85 in the leadoff spot. And you've got arguably their best coming up here with Hannah Scharf. So the first 198 for Oklahoma is secure. Not the first of the season, of course. They were way over that in the NQS, but the first one of the NCAA regionals this year. The leader in the clubhouse at the moment is Kennedy Hambrick for the all-around with a 39.575. Anna Sharp finishing things off on floor, and she's in a, a tough spot to be in, knowing that your team didn't show up necessarily the way you want it to, but you still have to finish the meet strong. She's doing a nice job working through it. At this point, you have to almost forget about the competition and just remember why you love gymnastics and perform the best routine you can. Switch half. Full there, and she's selling it. With a bigger routine here, though, she could potentially advance to nationals herself. Absolutely, nice way to finish that routine. She put it all together. Another good meet from Hannah Sharp. Exactly what we expected from her. The only Arizona State regular season All-American. Second team in the all-around in back-to-back -back years. Ranked 13th this season, and you're seeing why. A complete gymnast as we await her final score. And this should be a massive floor rotation for Arizona State. What a way to come back and finish the meet strong. A lot of props for Arizona State. So it is Oklahoma and Arkansas, those two regional rivals 
will get an opportunity to face off along with Minnesota and Cal. It was kind of as expected, I guess, except for the gym backs. Technically, this isn't chalk because Arizona State was the last seeded team in the competition, number 16, but Arkansas ranked number 18. I wouldn't call that much of an upset. We knew, Sam, that whether the Sun Devils or gym backs had the best night, that's probably who was going to earn that spot on Saturday. Yeah, and you know, the storyline for me is that Arkansas was coming in hoping to put a complete meet together, and they still have not put a complete meet together, <laughs> and we still don't know their full potential. So maybe on Saturday will be the first time this season and we'll be able to see their full potential. Wow, huge pike full in to a stuck landing. We close out tonight's competition with Jay Mack from Illinois State. She's had to wait the entire competition for this. And you know what? All eyes are on her, and they should be. This is entertaining. I'm into it as well. By the way, the all-around competition is complete. Kennedy Hambrick is your winner with a 39.575. Solid landings. How could you not root for Jay here? That should be a good score coming up for the individual out of Illinois State. Big hugs all around and could not have done that routine any better. And that's the best feeling when you leave that floor routine knowing you put it all out there. And we are now joined by the Oklahoma head coach, KJ Kindler. KJ, we're supposed to talk to you earlier. Sorry, the power ended up going out in the truck, but not here inside Lloyd Noble Center, not for your Sooners. What a performance, 198-175, the first 198 for any team of this year's regionals. But you always see some tweaks here and there. What'd you think of the meet? Well, you know, I felt like we were a little anxious starting out. We were, we were kind of making some like small mistakes on floor that we normally don't make. I've got a lot of youth on this team. This is their first regional championship. I felt like they were working out the kinks on that, but Vault was stellar. Like that, they have been lighting it up in practice and they absolutely lit it up tonight. That was a game changer for us. I kind of think it flipped everything and bars was equally awesome. Beam, we left a few tents out on the floor for sure. And I saw the best save of my life from the end of the beam <laughs> that I will ever see, I think. I think you're talking about Carly's because I saw oh, yeah. that too. And I was, I made a note on that on air that I, that was so impressive. She didn't come off the beam. So props to her. She there. went in two different galaxies during the routine and then ended up on earth. <laughs> I don't know. That's incredible. Well, when we spoke to you last week, you wanted to take it one meet at a time, one step at a time. Now that you've checked this box, what's the focus for Saturday? You know, recovery, recovery, recovery. That's what we're working on right this second. And as far as Saturday is concerned, we just need to calm down a little bit in that starting event. We're going to have the same rotation, which I think is a benefit. We've been able to practice it tonight, certainly. And so um, honestly, just to like start off a little calmer and then just sail from there. All right, coach. Thanks, thanks. so much. Appreciate the time. Great start for the Sooners. Thank you. The number one team in the country having no issues getting here in their home mat to the Saturday night regional final. Reagan Smith had no issues there. Just how talented this team is and why we are not surprised at all to see them, Sam, be the team to put up 198 to start things off. I mean, look at the members on their team. They've all got honors here. How can you do less than a 198 with these superstar studs on your team? They have got a fulfilled roster, star-studded team, and I can't wait to see what they do on Saturday. The